Last week, we looked at the origin story of the Zelda series, Skyward Sword, and some of my favourite easter eggs and references hidden in the game. However, it isn't only built on references to other games. Skyward Sword has its fair share of secrets and mysteries. A mystery which captivated me was one of the game's simplest ones. What is an Amber Relic? Amber Relics are notoriously common in Skyward Sword's world. One of many items, collectively known as Treasure, which Link can find throughout the land which becomes Hyrule ranging from simple tumbleweed and bird feathers, to items like the purest hatred and anguish of monsters in crystal form. Amber relics are strange teardrop-shaped items, found in every region of the surface. They're used for upgrading Link's items, as all treasure is, but it's never made clear what they actually are, or where they come from. The description reads, These amber-coloured chunks of precious stone are found everywhere. No one knows where their strange shape comes from. So, what are these mysterious items? Is there a backstory that the game doesn't explicitly tell us? And could these artifacts have a greater origin than it seems? Subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's look into it. So, what do we know about Amber Relics? To work with, we've got their shape, colour, size, as well as the very limited in-game descriptions of the item. They're teardrop-shaped, curved, and with a small hole in the larger end, and are apparently made from some form of precious stone. They're not found in any one particular area, they're found in all locations across the surface in abundance. However, interestingly, a similar item, the Dusk Relic, can be found only within the Silent Realms, the sacred plane of reality designed to test Link's spirit. Dusk relics are identical in appearance to their amber siblings, though are a deep purple in colour, fitting the overall hue of the Silent Realm, where everything, even the sky, is stained a shade of teal or blue. Their descriptions are perhaps even more vague than those of their counterpart item. This item is similar in appearance to an amber relic, yet very different. It can only be found in certain places. Again, the game gives us no real clues on the truth behind this relic, yet it's found in one of the most sacred locations in the game, a dimension created by the goddess in which only her guardians, light fruits, and sacred tears usually appear. Amber relics are made of a smooth, hard material, fitting their description as amber, a form of fossilized tree sap. The description implies that this material is some kind of precious stone, just with the colour of amber, but amber is what is known as an organic gemstone. Like pearl, it's not technically a mineral, but is usually included under the umbrella of precious stones, meaning it's very possible that they are formed from true amber. Aside from these small snippets of information, we can't really learn much more about the mysterious relics immediately from the game. However, from their strange shape, we can link them to a real-world jewel, Magatama, Japanese talismans dating back to around 1000 BCE. In fact, their names in Japanese directly translate to Amber or Dark Magatama, with Relic just being a close enough approximation for Western audiences. Aside from the confirmation that they are based on Magatama, their Japanese descriptions don't offer any more information. Just like the translation, Ambers mentions that the origin of their shape is unknown, and Dusk points out their similarity to Amber Relics, yet that they're very different. Magatama, literally translating to curved gem, have been around in Japan for millennia, originally made from basic stone, but later more precious metals, most commonly jade. Just like Skyward Sword's Amber Relics, the truth behind the Magatama's strange shape is still debated, common theories being that they're designed to look like animal fangs, teeth, fetuses, or even a crescent moon. The ornaments were often worn as pendants, and are thought to be sources of spiritual power or good fortune, historically used in religious practices, often drawing or binding spirits. But why would items inspired by these ancient Japanese talismans be found littered across not only the untamed wild surface, but the spiritual silent realms too? We know from a later game in the series, Breath of the Wild, that Amber holds the power of the Earth, 
Amber earrings, crafted by the Gerudo, are said to harness the power of the land, thereby increasing defense, which makes sense, for a material formed from tree sap, essentially the blood of trees. So it's clear that amber and dusk relics are symbolic of their respective realities. Amber, a material innately connected to the land, and dusk, made from an unknown, ethereal material, similar to the original and yet very different, just as the Silent Realm is to the real world. But let's go a step further. Amber relics aren't the only strange, mystical golden material we see in Skyward Sword. With Demise's seal in the present weakening, Zelda, now aware of her past life as the goddess Hylia, travels to the distant past, where she seals herself for millennia to ensure the seal holds. To preserve herself for these thousands of years, the reborn goddess channels light around herself, which crystallizes into a solid, honey-colored shell. This crystal holds Zelda until the present, when Link wishes upon the Triforce for Demise's eradication, after which it shatters, freeing her and leaving chunks of the shell on the floor. Zelda's crystal, a solid shell in which she is encased for an age, is incredibly reminiscent of a famous trait of real-world amber, where small organisms, mainly insects, can become imprisoned within amber, preserved perfectly for millions of years. Because it begins as tree sap, a flowing, viscous substance, it can trap small creatures. Over time, the sap hardens and fossilizes, becoming amber with the creature still within. It's clear that Zelda's crystal, which preserved her for millennia between the past and present, was inspired by Amber's preservative qualities. So perhaps the material created by Zelda is actually a form of artificial Amber. And having the origin of one form of this substance in the game, could this be the same source for the Amber relics too? Might Amber relics have been created, in an age long forgotten, by Hylia herself? As I've mentioned, amber relics are found in abundance in the real world, but their counterparts, dusk relics, are only found in the Silent Realm. However, everything found within this dimension has to be divine in origin, as Fee states, they're domains of the spirit, accessible only to the goddess's chosen hero. Meaning, just like the guardians were designed to test the hero, and the sacred tears placed for the hero to collect, the dusk relics too must have been housed in the silent realms by the goddess Hylia. Not only this, the connection goes a step further. At the end of a silent trial, Link is rewarded with an item. The water dragon's scale, claw shots, fire shield earrings, or finally in the skyloft realm, the stone of trials. The stone of trials is one of a pair. Another is found in the eye socket of a bird statue on Skyloft. When Link places his stone in the other eye, the statue opens up Sky Keep, allowing access to the Triforce. This stone, which features the crest of Hylia within it, and is obtained at the end of a silent trial, again seems to be made of a form of amber, partially translucent, honey-coloured, and divine in origin. Hylia herself crafted this stone, and as her mortal reincarnation, the Amber Crystal, so it's more than a possibility that she crafted two the Amber Relics and Dusk Relics. This connection is confirmed by another of the game's strange materials, the Goddess Plume. The Goddess Plume is a rainbow-coloured crystal, a treasure from an age long forgotten, which rumours state was dropped by the Goddess herself. The rarity of this strange object is stressed in its description. And it's true, they're only obtainable in a few ways. One in a couple of mini-games, a few treasure chests, or purchased from the Moonlight Merchant, a gossip stone who specializes in rare items. However, the main way of collecting a goddess plume is to randomly find one, sitting in place of an amber or dusk relic. There's a very rare chance that instead of a relic, a plume will spawn instead. Like here in Nehru's Silent Realm, normally a Dusk Relic sits near this tree, but here a plume has spawned, an item dropped by the goddess Hylia. With their divine origin clear, their design as Magatama makes more sense. As well as their more broad religious and spiritual connections, many Magatama in Japanese folklore are thought to have divine origins, such as when the gods hung many of the jewels on a sacred tree to lure Amaterasu, the sun goddess, out from a cave. While their descriptions are vague, 
there's a lot to the Amber and Dusk relics. The more we look into them, the stronger the bond seems between these treasures and the goddess Hylia herself who may have created and left the jewels across both the real world and silent realm. They symbolize the dichotomy of the material and silent realms, two halves of a whole, yin and yang. And it's fitting, in the Zelda series, that the element of spirit is represented by just this symbol, two parallel Magatama shapes, perhaps in universe designed to represent the relics left behind by the goddess. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.